Hello reformers and welcome to a special feature of Astro Boy Edge of Time. Now, as is the case, I am not being paid to make this video. This is not sponsored in any way. There you go, with that disclaimer out the way, we are playing this game. It's actually really fun. I like it a lot. It has a lot of different changes from other card games. And yeah, so if you're not into card games, this is a card game. If you're not into card games, then you know where to go. This, you know, you know that this is not for you. But I'm actually really enjoying this. I'm actually really enjoying this because it has a number of different factions. Now, I'll go over the factions a little bit later on, but we're currently in the story mode. There is a fully fledged story mode. This is a free to play game and you can download it right away. I personally feel like the free to play model is also pretty fair, to be honest. You earn Prisma by doing battles and you also earn prisoner by logging in every single day so daily rewards and things like that you can play online you can play a story mode and you can also play a, an arena slash tournament type mode so without further ado let's get into fighting So there you go. Now, the story, I've got to say, is quite interesting. I feel like the story is quite interesting. A lot of people are not going to get on with it too much. But basically, you're a person that has just woken up. As far as I'm aware, you have uh, amnesia or you're, you're not really knowing where you are. And you're approached by a machine called Uran. And she helps you along the tutorial sort of thing. She's kind of your companion throughout the story mode. And then she leaves you halfway after completing the tutorial. And then you have to, you know, act by yourself. And then you come across a machine rally. It's all about rights for machines because basically the humans and various other humans are attempting to kill the machines and the machines are trying to survive so it's kind of it's kind of like that anyway i'm going to accept this hand this is a really really nice hand i'm going to explain a little bit more about the strategies as time goes on but yes the story is really cool i feel uh, it may not be everyone's cup of tea but i personally think it's it's pretty cool anyway so these sand ghosts they have a modifier which basically means that whenever there is an enemy enforcer and an enemy guardian, they gain extra stats. So I'm going to wait with playing those for a little bit of time just until the enemy starts building up their board. Now, I have constructed this deck from machines. I am playing the Gearwork deck. Now, you can play as, I think, three other factions, and they all have different synergies, and they all have different unit types. The machine gearwork type deck is all about summoning big units, all about summoning things that are capable of dealing damage from afar with artillery and bombardments and you can throw grenades and all that sort of thing. So I personally feel like that's really cool. Now, we're going to be playing the cyborg in the, in the front here. Now, there are two different zones. If you saw the description of this card earlier, it is Enforcer and Guardian. Those are the two zones that you have to deal with. Now, the front is the enforcer zone, and the enforcer zone basically means that that is where you want to place your attacking cards. That's where you want to place the cards that are going to be attacking other enemies. And the guardian section is where you place units that are going to be blocking for you. So it's a little bit Magic the Gathering in that sense, where you have blocking cards. So for example, if I place this pipe robot right here, that is going to block any damage that is done by these by these cards right here attempting to attack my face. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to just attack one of these rats to get that out of the way because again, I have to get through the enemy's guardians as well as them having to get through ours. Now, apart from that, we have a number of synergies that of course we want to be you know employing here now oh, that's a siege cannon that's really nice 
that is going to come in really handy if they summon a very, very big Guardian, because as you can see, it deals 7 damage to a Guardian, so that's really cool. Otherwise, we have abilities. We have faction abilities. So this is relatively similar to a hero skill or something like that, and basically what it does is Look at this. Okay, so I activate this. This is my specific ability. I believe the other factions have other abilities. I haven't really played with the other factions too much. But, yes, this is what you can do with this. So, basically, I can swap out a card for one Quantum Cell. And Quantum is basically your, your mana or your magicka or wh whatever you need, your play points. And you need quantum to be able to play cards so if i wanted to for example what i could do is i i don't think i'm going to do that but basically what i what i'd like to do is actually summon the sand ghosts but i'm not going to do this but i could get the sand ghosts away and i could get a quantum cell and then i could use the quantum cell gain five quantum and then use the reinforced plating on this cyborg which would probably which would probably be pretty decent you know it'd be a pretty decent pretty decent move to make but what we're going to do instead is I'm going to be playing a giant mud beast in the front here. And now this cannot be targeted by enemy gears. And I assume that that means the the uh, the enemy faction skill or... Yeah, that's the thing. I haven't really explored some of the more complex gameplay elements. So I'm still learning. So obviously if, if something goes wrong, then you know why. Yes, you certainly know why. Anyway, have I have I gotten one of my favorite cards yet? No, I haven't gotten the, my favorite cards yet. I love the Robo Whales and the Spider Tanks as far. I think they're Spider Tanks. I think they're called Spider Tanks. But anyway, yeah, I really love those. They are really awesome units. I'm going to use Reinforced Plating here. Can I... Did I... Did, wait a minute. I think I just wasted that. Cannot be targeted by enemy gears? Well, it should it should have... It should have worked. Okay, well, never mind. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kill one of those then, I guess. Huh. Okay, I think maybe I may have made a bit of an error there, but oh well, never mind. Okay. Ah, this might be a good time to use sand ghosts. Oh yeah, that might be a good time to use Sand Ghost. Ooh, that's a lot of damage right there. Okay, so... Ah, oh, they traded. Oh, that's a shame. I was hopeful that they wouldn't trade, but... Oh well, never mind. Okay, I guess I'm just going to use Siege Cannon then. There you go, that's nice. Okay, I'm going to play this, the, the Pipe Robot, I suppose. There you go. That's, that's pretty decent. I only have one Siege Cannon. I only put one Siege Cannon in my deck. Maybe I should have put two. Maybe it would have been a good idea to put two, but... I don't know. This gets a protective halo. Ah, yes. Okay, so the problem with the protective halo is that if you try to deal damage to it, it will just reduce down to 1 HP instead of dying. So obviously that's a bit of a problem. But I'm going to play the sand ghosts now because as you can see, the sand ghosts are going to get a massive bonus and they are now a 4-4 four, four for 1, for 1 cost, which is really, really powerful. Anyway, we're going to, I think... Hmm... I'm actually unsure what to do right now. Uh, they all have protective shielding on them, which is very annoying. But I think I think I'm just gonna go like that, and then we're gonna use the thermal grenade on that over there, and then we're gonna play the lion in the front. There we go. I want to try and reduce as much damage that they can deal as possible because you never know they might have a buff or something that can synergize with what they currently have. Wow, really? They have another thing? If you have a guardian, this gets protective halo. Wow. Okay, they have another one of those. That's very annoying. Hmm. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to kill this. Right. Okay. So now, what I can do is I can play Lord Satan's Dragon. And Lord Satan's Dragon will shatter, which is an after-death effect. So when it dies, it deals 5 damage to all units. Every single unit, including my own. So I'm not entirely sure I want to do that right now. But what I would love to do is get rid of this guy. So I'm going to... Gonna use another grenade and I'm gonna just trade in there. I don't really want to trade in, but I'm gonna use the Robo Whale in the back. Now, the cool thing about the Robo Whales, this is the exact reason why I love these, they have stratagems. Now, stratagems, they charge up every single turn. So, for example, this is stratagem two, so it takes two turns 
for this stratagem to charge up. And what that means is it's then capable of dealing three damage to anyone on the field. So I personally feel like that is a really, really powerful ability. Hopefully we're gonna be able to use it to its best effect. Oh wow. They're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of good damage right there. Yeah, they're trying to kill the Robo Whale. You see that? They're trying to kill the Robo Whale because it's just really, really good. Ah, an upgrade set. Hmm. An upgrade set might actually be really good to use in just a second. Because what that does is it can upgrade any target ally machine. So that might be really nice, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play another one of these robotic lions. Gonna play the upgrade set on this. Let's see what it does. Oh yeah, that's what we like. Look at that, it has Juggernaut. When attacking Guardians, unblocked damage is dealt to the player. So if I deal one damage here, because obviously they only have one HP, then I will deal four extra damage to the opponent, which is nice. Let's see if that's actually gonna happen though, because they do have a protective halo, which prevents them from dying. So obviously that's a bit of a problem, but let's see how it goes. Ah, they destroyed my Robo Whale. I'm very upset about that, personally. Hmm. No, oh, well, never mind. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna play this. And we're gonna play Satan's Dragon, I think. Are we? Not sure about that, to be honest. Oh yeah, there you go. Nice. It does actually do as I thought. That's, that's really, really cool. Okay. Well, do bear in mind, actually, as well, this is the first time that I am playing with this new deck. I haven't played with this deck ever before, so, you know, do excuse some misplays if I do make them, because these are the first times I'm using this particular setup here. Ah, Robotank, yes! Love the Robotank. Gonna place the Robotank there, thank you very much. Okay, so this is obviously gonna go over there, gonna do even more damage, yes, even more damage, very nice. I'm actually gonna trade in over there because I don't want that guy to kill my robo tank. And then we're gonna see what happens. Oh yeah. Now, the Guardians cannot attack, just so you know. So that's the reason why I love placing robo whales and robo tanks in the back over here because that enables them every two turns to deal damage, even though they are Guardian units. So, you know, it kind of gets around the limitation, I suppose you could say. So I think that's really, really cool. Wow, this guy, this Zai, Zai, Zira, Zira, this Zira unit is dealing so much damage just by itself. I'm actually really surprised that we've been able to do that much damage. Ah, uh, oh, really? They, they're actually using a lot of healing abilities now. Well, that's annoying, isn't it? Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so we have another one of these. Could place that. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to place that there, I guess. Now, Shadow Step. Shadow Step is a really, really cool card that I've actually just discovered when I created this new deck. And basically what it does is it changes the zone of the target ally unit if possible. So in other words, if I wanted to place one of my Robo Whales in the front, in the Enforcer thing here, then I could do that. And then it could attack. I don't know whether it could attack straight away, but if it could, then that's absolutely fantastic. I think that's really cool. Anyway, we are going to... Hmm, I don't know actually what to do here. I think we're just going to go like that, and we're just going to get the extra sort of breakthrough damage, and then we're going to try and deal some damage to that. There we go. As you can see, it's pretty nice. And I don't know whether to play Lord Satan's Dragon yet, to be honest. I mean, I suppose I could to all units. Does that mean enemy faces as well? Hmm, I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna use Shadow Step because I'd like to see what actually happens. Yeah, you can actually attack straight away. Wow, that's cool. That is a really, really cool card. I only put one of those in the deck, but I think we probably need two. That's gonna make things much, much easier for us. And uh, yeah, now do bear in mind, I think when you place the Robo Whale in, yes, there you go. When you place the Robo Whale in the Enforcer area, it cannot use its stratagem any further. So that's the reason why, you know, some of these units have stratagems because then they can still use them while they are in the back row. So that's really, really nice. You can also unlock additional avatars as you can see here. So you can use, instead of having this guy, you can have this guy instead as your avatar. So that's pretty cool. And we also gain 25 Prisma.
there you go. So there is a little bit more exposition about the story, and as I say, the game is free to play. So if you want to play it, then the link is in the description down below. Anyway, let's go on to Rats Alley 3, which is the next stage. Alright, let's see what we can do with our new deck, and it seemed actually pretty strong, because the last time I played, my current deck was not particularly good. I think that was mainly because I was playing with the sort of standard deck, and I'm not saying anything against the standard deck, I think the standard deck's absolutely fine, but in general, eh, you know, you kind of want to do a little bit of a little bit of customization, I suppose you could say, so yeah, so anyway, let's get ready to rumble, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we want to draw one card. Come on now, give me that. Yes, there we go. Now, this guy only has 15 HP, so I would assume... Aha, uh -huh, yeah, I would assume this guy is going to be much, much more difficult. Okay, we're going to play the Danuba. Over there, that's really good. I mean, it, what it's going to do is it's going to reduce... When you draw a unit, reduce its cost by one. I think that's pretty nice. We want to play it as soon as possible as well, so that it can give us the greatest benefit. Oh my, he's going to play a lot of things, isn't he? Yes. Uh, right, okay, well this is this is a little bit worrying, isn't it? Okay. Guess I'll play a Robotank. Uh, I'm just going to kill that. There you go. I can't obviously attack with this, it has no attack. Hmm, I'm a bit worried about this actually. Yes, I'm a bit worried about him using Overclock all the time. Using Overclock, uh, overclock actually reduces the amount of cost. Hmm, that is worrying. Okay, so what are we going to do? Okay, I think what I'm going to... Hmm, okay, yeah, I think I'm going to play this. And then that charges up the stratagem, and then I'm going to use the stratagem against that. And then we are, your guardians cannot be targeted by enemy gears. I think I'm probably going to use that over here as well. That makes them immune to, as far as I'm aware, spells? I think? I'm actually unsure. But I suppose we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, they're probably going to they're probably gonna try and kill this as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Okay. Big amounts of... Uh, uh, they've they've made a big error here because I can just use photon beam. Oh yeah, use that photon beam, kill all of those in one fell swoop, and then we are we are in a really really good position. They just overcommitted way too much right there. So let's just continue to deal damage. We do have an upgrade set, but personally, I feel like I should probably use that on something a little bit higher cost. Oh, and then he used all units are one one. Oh, well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Not really. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to play this. That got, that's got six attack now, which is really nice. And then we are going to use that against this. And then I could play here. And then that's going to charge up the stratagem by one at the very least. And then the next turn we'll be able to use another two damage. So the hilarious thing is this thing at the back can now technically attack if we want it to, but obviously I'm not going to at the moment. I personally don't feel like he's going to survive this. I think he's probably dead. It seems like it, doesn't it? It does seem like it, so I think we're pretty happy with what we've got here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trade in here. I'm going to trade that. Just need to kill the Guardians, basically. That's all we need to do. Just need to kill the Guardians, and then this can go straight on through and kill his face. If we didn't have that, then of course we could just use this. And that's going to buff up this machine as well. So if we wanted to, we could do that, but we've, we've won. No problem at all there.
Mm, yeah, exactly. I also find that some of the subject matter in this game is very poignant. I'm not going to go into it any further than that, but I think it's quite poignant. Anyway, point is, you can play this game right now if you so desire. The link is in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.